Let's look at adding a strong base solution to a strong acid solution. What happens to the pH when 10 mils of one molar sodium hydroxide, a strong base, is added to a liter of 0.2 molar HCl, a strong acid? Now, strong acids and strong bases totally dissociate in water. That's the definition of strong acid and strong base. So HCl completely dissociates into H3O plus and Cl minus. We can look at that in steps, though. Just that might be instructive. Here's the initial concentrations, the change, and the equilibrium concentrations. Initially, I can add 0.2 moles of HCl to a liter of water to form 0.2 molar HCl. That'll immediately dissociate. The water concentration I don't have to keep track of. It doesn't appear in equilibrium constant expressions. That's a pure liquid. The H3O plus concentration in pure water, 10 to the minus 7. And initially, no chlorine ions. So I have a dissociation. I'm saying it's going to be complete. Every mole of HCl dissociates. It will form mole for mole, H3O plus, and Cl minus. So the equilibrium concentrations will be no HCl as the molecule, and 0.2 molar H3O plus, and 0.2 molar Cl minus. Now notice here I'm not writing 0.2 plus 10 to the minus 7th. I could, but it doesn't make much sense. The H3O plus concentration of 0.2 plus 10 to the minus 7th, 10 to the minus 7th is tiny by comparison, right? This is 0 0.2000001. So that's essentially 0.2. So the pH is minus log of 0.2. So I can say minus log the H3O plus concentration is 0.7. Now, we want to add 10 mils of sodium hydroxide at one molar. How many moles? of OH minus is that. I want to figure out how many moles of OH minus I'm putting in because they're going to react with my H3O plus. So molarity times volume equals number of moles. So the molarity, one mole per liter, that's one molar, mole per liter, times the volume in liters, 0.01, that's 10 milliliters, is 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide. If I add 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide, I'm actually adding 0.01 moles of hydroxide ion. So let's look at that. 0.01 moles of hydroxide ion will, will react with the 0.2 moles of H3O plus that's there. And I know there's 0.2 moles because I have 0.2 molar HCl and one full liter of it. So it's 0.2 times 1 liter, or 0.2 moles. So what does that look like? OH minus reacts with H3O plus to form water. How strongly does that react? Do I need to do an equilibrium calculation here? No, I don't, because the K for this reaction, the reverse reaction, is KW. So 1 over KW is the K for this reaction. KW is 10 to the minus 14th, so the K for this reaction 10 to the plus 14. So this goes completely to the water. So every mole of OH minus finds a mole of H3O plus and forms water, one for one. That's very neat and clean. We can look at that. I'm going to add 0.01 moles of base to 0.2 moles acid. Going to form some water. The change will be all of this will react with the acid, removing 0.01 moles of them, forming 0.01 moles of water. But again, forming pure liquid water doesn't appear in any equilibrium expressions. So the equilibrium concentrations will be no OH minus. That's completely used up. The H3O plus was in excess, so there'll be some of that left over. 0.2 minus 0 0.01, or 0.19 moles. And that 0.19 moles is in about a liter. It's in a liter plus the 10 mils of NaOH we added. It's about a liter. So it's about 0.19 molar. So the H3O plus concentration now will be about 0.19 molar. Minus log of 0.19 molar, 
uh, 0.72. So the pH has changed from 0.7 to 0.72. Not very much. In fact, you kind of expect that. Titration curves look like this. As you start adding the base, the titration curve shows you the pH changes only slowly initially. So here we've just added a few tenths of a mole, in fact, a few hundredths of a mole of base. So we're right in here in the titration curve. The pH hasn't started to change very much. Now, I can look at adding acid and base. Here I have an acid solution and a base solution. So this is concentrated. This is not as concentrated. As I add acid, or excuse me, as I add base to acid, we can watch the pH change by the color of the solution. This has an indicator in it. So when the pH passes 7, as I go along this titration curve, the color will change from red to blue. So let's watch this acid-base titration. Adding a strong base to a strong acid solution, let's watch that happen. pH changes slowly at first, and then rapidly to blue, the base solution. So this is well down here on the titration curve. I've gone past the equivalence point to the point where the base is determining the pH. A basic solution here, maybe around pH 10 to 13, a blue color for my indicator. So there's adding a strong base to a strong acid solution.